I want to talk about the role of violence in philosophy and how your philosophy deals with violence is going to determine a lot of things about you as a person and about any political philosophy or social philosophy that you come up with. And just obviously any philosophy involving how you interact with other people. Now really this problem of violence in philosophy is dealt with a couple ways. Um, uh, one of them being pacifism, just saying, well, you should never be violent. But a lot of people, that's not the common way, in the sense that a lot of people realize there are certain situations or admit that you have to be violent in certain situations. Of course, the pacifists watching this are rejecting that. They're going, no, no, there aren't those situations. It's an illusion or something. But from my, from, as a relativistic, uh, from a relativistic frame, frame um, there's no, um, it's just, we're just saying pacifism can't be absolute. This is really what these other people are saying too, because generally, you know, these people are accepting that pacifism is a good goal, just that it's not quite possible. But then, most of those philosophies endeavor to describe ways that justify the violence, you know, because the real goal is not just to be pacifist, but to be right. And so if we're going to have to be violent, we want to be right. Um, in my philosophy, uh, based on a relativistic skepticism, uh, it's, it's never right to be violent, but you may have to be violent. Uh, violence is the tool of last resort. There's a lot of people that want to say that violence is uh, just not allowed at all because they think, well, if it's a last resort, then people will make up the excuses that they need to justify it as a resort. And. Uh, you know, that's just too bad. If they're dishonest and going to make up reasons because they really want to be violent, they're not really trying to be pacifist. This philosophy is for people trying to be pacifist. Okay? And in that framework, it just happens that as a last resort in conflict, you know, you may have to be violent. If somebody attacks you, you may have to be violent. If there is an honest-to-goodness uh, conflict over resources, and if you go get that resource, your family survives, and if the other person gets it, their family survives, then there's a real conflict there, and yeah, it may resolve to violence. Um, you know, it's possibly frightening to look at things that way when you're giving license to people that want to be violent, you know, giving them an excuse, but I'm not that person. I don't want to be violent. You know, my relativism is all about trying to see the illusion in conflict. And, um, and resolve conflict and minimize conflict. So I'm trying to do that naturally. So um, the fact that sometimes you can't avoid violence is, is just a, an unfortunate fact of life. And maybe not even unfortunate. I mean, it is there as, as a threat. It is the, the negativity of violence is why we want to develop philosophies like relativistic skepticism that help us avoid and minimize uh, violence and to limit conflicts uh, to those areas before they become violent. But um, I just wanted to say that, and I'm curious if people are conscious about how they deal with the question of violence. I think a lot of people really avoid it because they do want to see a peaceful world and have a peaceful philosophy. So they, they like, they, they'll do weird, weird, you know, hybrids where basically they have a pacifist philosophy, but then they have exceptions where that philosophy doesn't apply. In a relativistic framework, um, you make those judgments relative to the situations and relative to actual conflict.